Um, I'm a filmmaker as well. We made it our, our first feature film last year and did a small run with it. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and so we, you know, we're thinking about this stuff all the time. And even even just like in the, at the beginning of our journeys, we're thinking about this. Or at least I am thinking about being a filmmaker is a privilege. It's a very privileged I, yeah, um, job is, title to be able to, to be able to have it, um, to make a living at it, or otherwise just to be able to be making films. How do you deal with that sense of like, um, what responsibility does that add to the job? You, you build a city, you keep life going as a doctor does, you educate as a teacher does. What, what do you do with that life afterwards? Is it just gonna be this kind of sterile life? You need something to enrich you somehow. You know, um, I mean, personally, I, I have no guilt over my privilege because I had 16 years of bullshit in my life, of working in the underground in London, I had, over, I had over 50 jobs, all of them low-paid, menial jobs or data entry jobs. So I have no guilt whatsoever. Um, I mean, it's weird with filmmakers because the arguments fall into two camps. You know, that they get paid too much or they kind of use, oh, you love making films, therefore you should be doing it for free. I've heard that argument a lot. Um, you know, we thought you were an artist, you know, we thought you were in, in, into, you, you want money for this? <laughs> That argument gets used quite a bit. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm extremely lucky to do what I do. I had it's very disorientating for me because I had either extreme bad luck where I was just just not getting anywhere. And the last three films, well, no, the last two films, um, the last two films were remarkably straightforward to to fund. And okay, it's not always going to be like this. I have to just enjoy it while, while it lasts. But then again, the budgets are lower. I mean, this one was one million, which is that's a lot, that's a hell of a lot of money. And it's not easy to raise what, one million, but it's a lot easier than raising five million. Five million is a whole different game. I mean, I, I, I attempted one, I, actually recently I attempted to raise five million for something else. It's impossible, you know, it's not, it doesn't work, for me anyway. Um, so if I keep the budgets low, like so far, they seem to be getting funded, and you kind of get left alone, which is the most important thing. I also, I, I always think about something that Tarkovsky says. I mean, this, um, he says, you know, the less you, the more you know, the less you know. Um, <laughs> as, 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 as you, you know, get deeper into something, your horizons kind of fall, fall away. And like, this is your, fi this is your third film, right? Third, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you've you've undoubtedly probably been learning so much throughout each film and the process and, and everything. Just but with each film, it feels like starting again. It's the, the same fear doesn't go away on the first day of shooting, and uh, especially as I'm self-taught, I never had that official, formal film school training, so I've always felt like I've winged it somehow. Um, there's a lot of things are spontaneous. I, I, I think my first film I was very rigorous. I was very, I was not open to, to things changing, whether it's circumstance or actors and so on. And I think that was probably some in, insecurity involved in that. And I think with this film, you do become more laid back and, and you become open to circumstances changing things. And, and you just don't worry about it as much. Because things will be different from what you've written, they always are, but they can be better as well. And, um, obviously, if someone's saying, change this, and I don't like it, that's a very different thing, but... but uh, so, yeah, if actors come up with something, you know, I remember Sid's, she kind of flicked Kiara's nipple, and that, we didn't even talk about that happening, it just happened, and I thought, uh, yeah, we don't need to retake, that's great, you know, what's, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. um, I feel right. like the for this film, um, I haven't seen your previous two films, although I really want to see them. Um, you had to say that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I actually wanted to see, um, I was at AFI last year and I missed I missed Barbarian Sound Studio, but I really wanted to see it. Um, but my, my point is, uh, I like what you said about writing last night in the Q&A, just about how you have to shut everything else off. I'm totally the same way, and I feel like, you know, the writing, I feel like, really drives this movie in a lot of way. And you're talking about, as a director, being open to things. But, you know, um, yeah, can, can you just talk about your writing process a little bit and how that kind of translates or how it changes when you're the director? I mean, you just, you, are you, like, very precious about the, the script while you're writing it? And then when you get to the director phase, do you just kind of, you're much more loose with it? Or, or? What's, what's, what's interesting about writing for me, I mean, 
even I was just saying that at the screening that um, the hard work is actually clearing your head. The writing that's fairly straightforward. Once that starts, it's it's quite a pleasant experience, which kind of you know it's almost like you know it just happens it happens by itself. But the hard thing is just erasing all your day to day nonsense, all that stuff that goes through everyone's head. Just sit yourself in a room and get Wi-Fi completely out of the way, no internet. Um, and then after a few days, if you're lucky, you get into that state of mind where I think it, the trick is, is 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 to live in that world. It's not about plot, you know. So and I, I don't write treatments. I write the script, then I write the treatment based on the script. Never write, the, I never write the script based on the treatment. Um, because I think the experience of writing the script is, is you are living in that world, you're existing in that world. And what's really strange about it is when you finish the script, you still live in that world. There's this is kind of afterflow. That, is that the word? I don't know what the word. Anyway, but I had to write two scripts in a row once, and um, it was impossible because I was still living in the world of the previous script, and I couldn't cut it off and get into the other script. Um, Postpartum. That, that's when you know. That's when you know you've written something that might be interesting. If you if you finish it and you're still living in that world, you think, oh, okay, there's probably something in this. You know, like anything you do. Some are going to hate it, some are going to like it, but um, that's the key for me. When I go, I rent a little office, when I go home after the office, I'm still in that world, then okay, I'm writing the script now. <laughs> I never really, I'm, this, is, this is just me, I'm not saying it as a kind of prescriptive thing, but I, I never went to those courses, I never read those books. Um, I was always a bit scared of having it constipate my star. I didn't want to think about it too much. Um, that's just me, so I'm not knocking anyone who, 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 who you know, go, goes in these courses. But um, no, I think that's great. I mean, I'm I'm the same way. I feel you know that all that stuff does it just sort of um, clogs the arteries of the of creativity some, a in a way. You know, it. it does clog the um, arteries. And um, our audience is is people who are, are just in case you didn't know, uh, our publication is called No Film School. So we're very oh okay well, yeah we're we're basically all about like you know self teaching and, and um, you know trying to not let that stuff get in the way although now just the technology gets in the way because everyone's so into technology and that's like this maddening aspect of it now but it's great because it's, it's affordable when I made my film 20 years ago on 16 well it cost a fortune to make it, it cost like 10,000 um, pounds that's a lot of money and you, you've got to pay off that money and you've got to save up for another film and obviously it still costs money because you've got people involved you've got to pay them but um the equipment is just nothing now. Once you've got a phone, that's it. Off, you know, you can go. I mean, you know, to rent a camera, to buy the film stock, to develop the film stock. Uh, you know, we were using six, six plate steam back, so we had to hire hire the steam back, go to this room, and you know, convert the sound. It was it was, it was expensive. Um, so people lament the loss of film, and I completely see that. But it's so amazing now that you, you can just just do it now. I mean, it was such a big thing to hire a 16mm camera back in you know 20 years ago. I mean, obviously you have different different problems now. The the emphasis has shifted to not how how can I get my film made. The emphasis has shifted to how how the hell can someone see my film because people are inundated with films. Just people just don't have the physical time. So I used to get upset when people wouldn't see my stuff. But I get it completely now because people just don't have the the hours in the day to watch so many films.